Um, board members, if we can get start, get you to take your seat, we'll get started. Board Member Nelson, will you lead us to in our Pledge of Allegiance? I think Scott, when, when I'll get it started. Okay. okay. Well, in a, just a second. I want to welcome everyone to our board meeting um, today. Uh, we'll start off with, on our opening business, um, we'll have Board Member uh, Nelson lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. After me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you, board member. Nelson, next we will have a board member a message from board member Kathleen Reby. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a great first year for me on this board. I have met so many great people in my communities. I have attended board meetings. I've attended town councils, community meetings gone to schools and met so many wonderful people that are great parts of our communities and our schools. Um, while I was at a school board meeting, one of the principals read a poem by a teacher that works in our school. And I'd like to share that poem with you now. Uh, I think it's uh, indicative of our relationships with our communities and uh, how we need to work together to create a great space for our students. The name of the poem is Starbust, and it's by Marcy Weeble. Stardust, a child, a bit of stardust, blown free from the realm of the sky, upon the breeze of mystical magic, becoming the joy of each new day. As a butterfly's chrysalis opens, begins a child's journey of learning, an awakening of a mind wide open. Our students, sonnets waiting to be written, symphonies waiting to be heard, the canvases of their hearts painted with hues of knowledge, each an essence of intuitive spirit, honing respect, understanding, and caring, woven into a generation of compassionate humanity. Um, I, I really like this because it speaks to how important each member of our schools are. And this paraeducator loves her students so much and she felt compelled to write this poem. So it speaks to every part of our schools and our communities and every part of our child and how they have so many different um, skills that we need to enhance. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Board Member Reby. Uh, next up, we would like to invite our new employees to come up, and we're fortunate to have Board Member Belknap right there that can knows how to run that mic. And Good morning. I'm Michelle Watts with Human Resources, and I'm here to introduce the new employees, and they'll come up and introduce themselves. Rebecca Nielsen, I'm working in financial operations, I'm working on the new grants management software. Hi, I'm Hal Evans, and I'm working in the review and auditing team. Hi, I'm Ron Litchfield, and I'm working in financial operations as the transportation specialist. Hello, I'm Scott Eddy. Uh, working in financial operations for the Children's Nutrition Program. I'm Tammy Gear, working in special education as the fiscal policy and data specialist. 
Jennifer Slade in special ed and a new coordinator out there. Thank you for joining UFBE. Uh, next, we have Kathy Jansen, who's going to talk about our, our art. Good morning. Thank you, Chair Huntsman, and Happy New Year to everyone. Um, this month, we are pleased to have art from the Cache Valley, two charter schools, and a, a, a public, a, a regular public school in the Cache County School District. On the east, we have self-portraits. These are uh, done by third grade students at Eth Edith Bowen Lab School under the direction of Lisa Saunderson. The process that these students used was that they did some very uh, detailed look at color and they matched color and created color by combining several layers of crayons in browns, oranges, yellows, and pinks to match their self-portrait and be as close as they could to what they look like. They match their hair color and textures as well. Um, they learned about proportion. Um, when you see, when you typically see self-portraits of kids, the eyes are way up in the forehead. And if we actually measure, our eyes are almost in the middle of our face. So proportion is something that they learned as well. On the wall here, this, of course, is uh, phases of the moon. And hasn't it been great to see the beautiful moon the last few nights in that uh, super moon sequence? This was a re real detailed process as well. The students at uh, Bear River Charter School, under the direction of Brooke Lambert, created a foam sculpture of the phases of the moon. Then they covered that sculpture with heavy foil. They painted the foil black and then they use steel wool to give it the burnished look. So they went through a several process of sequencing and uh, following directions, and you see that they created some, some beautiful pieces. First graders studied about monarch butterflies, uh, and this was also at Bear River Charter School. In math, they learned about symmetry, in science, they learned about the path of the migration and the life cycle of the, the monarch butterfly. And as they folded paper, they, tr they imagined what the wings of the butterfly looked like. They drew half of it on one side, and when they unfolded the paper, they were amazed to see that they were the same. And so they learned symmetry as well. This had many layers of integration in that um, their study of the monarch butterflies coincided with their celebration of Dia de los Muertos. And the legend has it that the monarch butterflies of the, are the spirits of those who have passed on. So there were layers of integration as well. Uh, in the back, Lewiston Elementary, under the direction of Mandy Sig, students studied Utah native animals. They did uh, research using Chromebooks. And once they had thoroughly studied the animals, they also studied the uh, genre of pop art. And they created pop art of the animals that they had studied. So they're not exact likenesses, but pop art in a process of reduction print. So again, a real detailed sequencing of steps that students needed to do. Each of those pieces is three layers of print with different colors, each time reducing the relief 
to to create the the different pieces of the print. So thank you for letting us share. Those are the art pieces for this month. Okay. Any questions on the art? I'm saying none. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we're going to turn the mic over to uh, Superintendent Dixon to introduce um, our education highlight. It's my pleasure to introduce to you some students and faculty from East High. Recently, I had the opportunity to visit East High with board member Lear and uh, met some articulate, wonderful people in a class that I've become quite fond of. As you can see, I'm an, a big fan of East High. Um, I was intrigued by East High before just based on data. You might recall from our um, study session recently, Cristel Estrada, Dr. Estrada talked to us about students who are learning English as a second language at East High and, and students in that category um, are graduating at a rate of 87 percent, well above other high schools in the state who have similar populations. So many great things are going on at East High. I've talked to you about their food bank that board member Lear serves in one day a week, um, their boutique. Uh, pardon? Um, and these students are here on their vacation. They are still out of school. Um, so I want to introduce to you um, two of the faculty members that, uh, in my estimation, are uh, some of the best heroes and rock stars in this state, and that's uh, Ms. Lee Vandenacker, who teaches the course that the students are going to talk about. Uh, she's affectionately known as Miss V. And uh, rock star principal, Mr. Greg Mon, who um, is a very vision visionary leader. Um, we're going to hear from the student voices today about how the class called Techniques for Tough Times um, is making a difference in their lives. And we often celebrate students who have won robotic competitions or uh, musical competitions or have perfect scores on the ACT, and yet these students are conquering um, some important life lessons and life skills, and I think that's the most important thing to celebrate. So we'll turn it over to the students. And you can just like hand that. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Dixon, and thank you, board members, for allowing us to be here. Um, I know that you want to hear from our students, and so I'm going to just <laughs> hand the mic to them, and they will tell you all about the class. Just going to put it on the table. Okay. You'll feel better if you can set it. Okay. First, I want to start by thanking you, Dr. Dixon, and the rest of the board for your time today. My name is Nell Stevens. I actually graduated from East in 2015. I'm now at BYU. Um, I learned so much from Mrs. V's class. <laughs> Most of which is going to be really difficult to articulate to you guys today. Um, but the main thing that I took away from Mrs. V's class would have to be a sense of empathy. Thank you so much. Um, I think East is a very unique school in that our demographics are very diverse. And um, I had a lot of honors classes, a lot of AP classes, where I didn't get a lot of the interaction that I did in Mrs. V's class. And um, that sense of empathy and understanding and communication, I think, has been essential in my life as I've moved on into college and both and also in my personal life. Um, I also think that a lot of the communication skills and leadership skills that I've learned from her are um, essential to success in life. My brother actually went to East before Mrs. V's class was offered, and he made a lot of poor decisions that have affected him in his life today. And I think had he had the opportunity to learn from Mrs. V and gain the leadership skills and communication skills that I've learned from her, his life would be very different. So thank you guys. 
Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd also like to start by thanking Dr. Dixon for inviting us here and for all you board members for allowing us to be here. Um, I'm a senior at East, and this is my fourth year with Mrs. V taking Techniques for Tough Times. Um, my name is Isabel Cowley, and Techniques for Tough Times is a course designed to build leaders among the youth, and I've learned so many valuable skills and lifelong lessons in her class, and I would say the most important thing I've learned is resiliency. Uh, when I first came into East as a freshman, I had a really hard time um, dealing with my situation at home. Um, my older brother is <clears throat> has been a drug addict since he um, was at East High, and I feel the same way as now. I think that if he had the opportunity to have her class, he would be in a much different place today. But um, anyone who's had any experience with drug addiction knows how um, it can affect a family and how hard it is to watch someone go down that path. But um, I just felt such a victim and I didn't know um, how to get out of my anger and get out of my confusion. And that is something that I learned first in Mrs. V's is that um, only I was allowing myself to um, go down that path. and let my anger um, drag me down, essentially, and almost take away one of my most amazing privileges, which is the right to an education. And um, I just love Mrs. V, and I owe a lot of my success to her and to my classmates and for sharing their stories with me as well and um, teaching me how to get through hard times. and how to ask for help and how to help others around me by sharing my experience and my story. And um, I just think that it has been the most critical component to my education and I wouldn't be here today, where I am today, if it weren't for Mrs. V and for Techniques for Tough Times. So thank you. My name is Quentin Lamb. I would like to thank Dr. Dixon and the rest of the board for your time today. I'm a senior at East High School. Um, growing up, I got Fs on every writing paper that I wrote for all my classes. And this wasn't because I was a bad writer. It was because nobody could read my writing. I had horrible handwriting. Um, in like around the eighth grade, I'm a senior now, and around the eighth grade, I found cursive. And cursive gave me a means to communicate with my teachers so they knew what I was putting on the page. Similarly, when I transferred to Ms. V's class in my 10th grade year, I was getting whatever the social equivalent is to Fs in all my classes, which is pretty much eating lunch in my mom's classroom, um, trying to stay to myself. Ms. V was to me like cursive was to my writing. She gave me a means and the skills to communicate effectively with people, to say no, um, any social emotional skill you can think of. And I value these skills and thank her for them. Um, they've helped me in the high school field. I know I can carry them onto the career field and use them to become a leader of this state as I grow up. Thank you guys for your time and that's what I have to say. Hi everybody, I would just love to thank you all for being here and being willing to hear us speak today um, because I know most classes don't get the opportunity to do this. My name is Taylor Murray and I'm a junior at East High School and this is actually my first year being able to take Mrs. V's class and all I can say is that it genuinely has changed my life. Um, you learn skills in this class which translate to skills to make you successful in life. The thing that has been the most important to me this year is learning compassion. And I know a lot of people think you can't learn compassion, that it is something that people are born with, which is true. But in this class, 
there's so much diversity and everyone has their own story. Everyone faces their own trials and hardships. And you learn really how to connect with them and you learn, you feel the things they do and you don't get this experience in any other class, in any other platform in life really. And we're so, so lucky. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, my mom died and it's so easy to just wallow in your own pain and what you're going through. In this class, you realize other people who you wouldn't even know are going through things harder than you are, things just as hard as you, and you wouldn't even know. And this class has really just opened my eyes to life and the bigger pictures of it. And I can just say that it really changed my life in this way, and I will be forever grateful. My name is Charles Hansen. Thank you for your time, board. Um, I'd just like to start off by saying this class has been a complete life change, life changing for me, uh, especially coming to a high school. I didn't go to the middle school that everyone went to, so coming into high school was really hard to to work with all these kids who had already kind of built their friend groups. What I learned most from this class was self empowerment, knowing that I can do hard things and that I can take on challenges and not feel alone, <coughs> be able to communicate. Uh, I'm a third year student of this class. I'm a junior at East High School. And I took this class because my brother suggested it. And I ended up um, sitting next to one of my brother's friends. And after being bullied for years and feeling lost coming into this class, I learn skills that I think are necessary for any student, uh, no matter what your challenges are, knowing that you can do hard things and that there are always people out there to help you and that no one has the right to take anything away from you. I think that this class is essential for all students because everyone deserves the right to an education and the right to make their own choices. Thank you. Um, good morning, board members. Uh, I'm Ben Ford. I'm a senior at East High. I just want to thank you guys for giving me your time. Um, Ms. V has single-handedly changed the culture of East High. Uh, I have a couple of my best friends who have graduated high school and are in college right now because of the things that she has taught them. She has given them opportunities that no one else gave them. She believed in them when no one else would. She would help them after like in her own time when no one else would. And she just has loved her students like no other teacher. And some of the stuff she teaches, just about leadership and resiliency, you can just see it in the halls of East High. There are like, sometimes problems with kids like outside of her classrooms <laughs> during lunch or whatever, stuff like that. But kids just respect her. The stuff she teaches is all about respect and just giving back to East High and giving back to your community. Um, and she just really has totally influenced the entire culture of East High. And she has made people want to graduate and want to be successful. That's the thing I've noticed most about her, is just like being a football player, being on the football team with such a diverse group, you never really know where someone's coming from. And so you never really know what they're going through at home. And that's kind of the hardest thing, is we have kids who don't have homes on the football team. And, you know, without stuff that I've learned from Ms. V in her class, it would be so easy for me to judge them and to like, you know, instantly put them aside as someone who wasn't good enough, someone who wasn't worth it. But I've learned that like everyone has a story and it's hard to hate someone whose story you don't know. Um, and it just has helped me so much. Like I've made friends with kids I never would have made friends with without taking your class. It's just totally opened my eyes. And like being in like the place we are right now in the world, with so much like closed mindedness, a class like hers is exactly what we need to open the eyes of our students. Thank you for your time. I want to thank uh, Dr. Dixon and the board for having us this morning. Uh, this is a really 
awesome uh, opportunity for East High um, and the curriculum that Miss B has de developed because it is so amazing. Um, my eighth grade year, I'm a senior, uh, so this was a little while ago. My eighth grade year, I had my registration card for high school, which was terrifying. Um, and on it, there was a class called Techniques for Tough Times. And uh, my mom suggested that I take it. I thought, you know, I don't have tough times. That's uh, kind of weird, you know, it's a little off-putting. Uh, I signed up for it, which is kind of a risk, um, best risk I've ever taken. Uh, little did I know I was going to have a very tough time coming up. Um, my sophomore year, on the first week of school, I had a near-death experience um, with my head. And uh, this was my second year taking Miss B's class, and thank heavens I was taking Miss B's class. She's an advocate for every student at East, and it is amazing to have that. Uh, I came back to school uh, not really knowing what my future was going to be like. I didn't really know if I was going to be able to ease back in my classes very well. I just, I, it was all foggy and confusing. I didn't know what was uh, lying ahead of me. And Miss V made all the difference. She was the one that got me back into school, back into my social life. She was the one that taught me the skills that I needed to be able to communicate with my friends and really share what I was feeling uh, in my head because it was just a blur and I didn't know what to do. Throughout high school, um, I've taken a lot of classes being a senior. Um, I've met a lot of different kids. Uh, and I've had classes where I've taken it full, for a full year and at the end of the year, I couldn't tell you a single thing about every person in the class. For some cases, I couldn't tell you the name, uh, the first name of everybody in the class, um, which was just kind of mind-blowing looking back at the year that I didn't really take the time or um, that this curriculum wasn't really implemented in the class for me to get to know these kids. When I walk into Ms. V's class, it's a whole different world. The amount of respect that you feel when you walk into Ms. V's class is something that I would never have felt in high school if it weren't for the curriculum that we were learning, the respect we were learning for each other. It really is um, something completely different than any other class I've ever taken. And I think that it needs to be implicated into every single class that I take. Um, I've been on a lot of sports teams. Um, some have been successful, some have not. The difference is the chemistry of the team. If you know your teammates, if you know your players, if you know what they're capable of, you're able to work together. That's been the same thing with my classes. If I'm able to connect with my uh, students, not teammates, if I'm able to uh, connect with the students in the class, then I'm able to connect with the class itself. And that makes all the difference, it really does. Um, it may not, it seems like an individual thing uh, when you're filling out worksheets and trying to make your way through the curriculum and understand anything. It is not an individual, an individual thing. It's really a group effort. Um, and getting to know the students uh, in your class is crucial. I've seen a lot of students and I would have no idea what they're going through. In Ms. V's class, I know what everybody's going through and it is such a privilege to know that kids are going through all this stuff. Same thing that I'm going through. Ms. V has given us uh, the skills that we need to be able to communicate this, and it's crucial. It really is. It is something that every student needs to be able to do. Um, if I hadn't been able to communicate what was going through my head after my accident, um, I don't know if I would have been able to make it through all of high school, um, being able to keep up with my classes and maintain grades. Um, classes like math and science and all that stuff, it's going to take me far in life. Miss V's class is life. Miss V's class is social interactions, which I happen to have quite a few of being in high school and being able to live a life in the world. Uh, I've been blessed to be able to go to East High, which has so much diversity, um, and being able to communicate um, to so many different people uh, on so many different levels, whether it be kind of surface level conversation or taking it to a very deep level. It's just been such a blessing. Um, and something that I will always be grateful for. We have Nell Stevens here who's been out of the class for a long time and the fact that she's willing to come back from BYU and still advocate for it, uh, I think it really shows how amazing this class really is. It is life-changing, it has changed my life, I know it's changed all these lives and I really hope it continues to change more lives. Thank you. Thank you, we, Ms. V, we have a couple adults here that we probably want to hear from. Thank you very much. Um, it's very humbling and difficult to follow that, knowing the inside story and what they did, what they left out as well. Um, one thing I will tell you, um, you can Google my name and find out my um, degrees and awards, but that's not what makes me the teacher I am today. The teacher I am today is directly directly related to my students and their willingness to teach me. And they are the reason 
that I am able to teach them. They have taught me what more they need from me, from our principal, and quite frankly, from all of you. This is a new time. All students have obstacles. All students need to have the skills, the resources to get through those obstacles, to navigate on so that they find their own success in life. What they're talking about is empowerment of student voice, and every one of them have a student voice, and it's just my privilege to teach them. U.S. Representative uh, Tim Ryan stated when he talked about ESSA, every student succeeds that. These are not soft skills. There is nothing soft about the social-emotional learning skills. These are the very skills that will create the society we all long to live in. You heard them talk about empathy. You heard them talk about diversity. Unfortunately, in our world, sometimes I fear we're going backwards. Please come and visit our class. We'd love to have you. I'd love for you to hear about the person who really makes it possible, my principal, Mr. Greg Maughan. Without him, this class would not be taught at East High School because all of you know he has to be willing to fund it. So I'm going to stand up and give him the mic. Thank you. Honestly, she's too kind. But um, I, I just want to add, by the way, I'm Greg Mon from the principal at East. Um, every one of these kids are just like my own kids. Um, I have four of my own at home, um, but I have 2,000 more that I get to see every day, and that is the highlight of, of my life every day, getting to interact with two th about 2,004 kids. I mean, how cool is that? So, and, and you get to see how cool they are. So, um, But one thing I would say about this class is um, I try to always have things go through my parent lens first. Um, as we make decisions, as decision makers, I imagine you guys are the same way. The, the first lens that, that we should always run things through is, is this what I would hope my kid's principal would do? Or is this what I would hope my board members would do? Um, because if the answer to that is yes, pretty much 100% of the time you're making the right decision and for the right reasons. Um, this class, Ben stated it best I think when he said that um, having this class has changed the culture of, of East High. It's something that we've had for several years um, and I can tell you that there's data to back that up as well. It's not just that we're up here saying something. Um, when you look at um, data related to discipline, things like that, um, we consistently each year see a decrease in, um, in discipline. Um, Ms. One thing Ms. V didn't talk about is um, she also helps mediate things for us with conflict resolution. A big part of this class is conflict resolution. These are all the skills that as parents, as grandparents, we want our kids and grandkids to have and to possess so that we can feel confident that they'll be successful and that they'll be happy. Um, they are life skills. Um, they're not the soft skills. In fact, I would argue that, if anything, they're the, the hardest skills that our students need because they're going to be faced with the need to pull and call on those skills and those strategies as they transition from, from high school to college or to career, to life, to relationships. Um, I, I can't tell you how many parents I've had, you know, kind of tongue-in-cheek and, and half-joking, but but half serious at the same time, ask, you know, is there any way we can have a class for parents on this? Um, it's, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing class. It's an amazing curriculum. It's something that is principal. Um, I've asked Ms. V to, to help with some professional development on how to implement some of these things into um, all of our classrooms. So that, because not every kid, not all 2,000 kids can, can take this class. Um, but 2,000 kids can be impacted by it um, as we provide professional development and things on meeting those students' needs. Um, and if anything, I would say that's one area that I think a, as a state school board you guys could really help on is, is having um, that, that expectation that, um, that these are things that we do focus on as well. Um, but uh, 
it's it's had a, a huge impact on the school. It's had a huge impact on our students, our faculty, our community. It's had a huge impact on me. Um, we're really fortunate to have it. Uh, it's it's made such a large impact that th this next year um, we've we're developing right now. Miss V is is helping develop the curriculum for a semester long class that all ninth graders will take on how to how to kind of navigate high school, how to um, how to instill some things like grit and resiliency and sticking with it, and how to advocate for yourself. You know how to how to approach a teacher, things like that. Um, because those are skills that we, we believe are necessary for our students to um, get early on so that they can find greater success their ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade years, and then moving beyond high school. So thanks for your time. I appreciate everything you guys do. Um, <clears throat> thank you, board member comments. Oh, that's funny right there. Um, board member Lear. A part of this community. I it just my ch my children all went to East High. Nell's one of the best friends. Her whole family's a friend of my oldest, my my only daughter. And I just think you guys are such great representatives of the community. I'm so proud to be part of you and and continue to be part of East High. Fifteen years after my last child graduated. So thanks. Um, thank you, Principal Mon and Mrs. V and, and students of, of East High. I appreciate you bringing your message to us and, and what you've learned from the class. I'm sure you're going to be great examples moving forward and and share these skills that, that you've had. And it's kind of set a tone for our, probably the rest of our meetings. We'll have an opportunity later this week, and I've got it on my to-do to chase down um, your district superintendent and um, your board members and thank them for what support their support in this class and what happens in your lives. So thank you very much. I'm not seeing any other comments, so appreciate you coming on your day off. Oh, oh, there we go. Board member Reby. Uh, I'm a teacher in a school and um, we always need more ambassadors for compassion ambassadors for open-mindedness, ambassadors for empathy. So please go out and be ambassadors for all those wonderful skills. And uh, as a teacher hearing these things, it makes me feel good that you are out there helping other students in your schools. So thank you so much for being ambassadors for all the good that our schools have. Um, board member Cummins, Lisa Cummins. You, you tore me up a little bit. Um, when I was in high school, my class was 76 kids. Sorry, that was not supposed to happen. Um, we did not have this class. Um, you're very fortunate to have this type of class because it wasn't given when I was younger. And um, I wouldn't say that the problems have changed. I just would say it's been expedited and enhanced. Um, my background was that I served uh, in a juvenile correctional facility as an intern. And the boys that I was assigned to, there's about 14, to, ages 14 to 18. I was 18 at the time, it was crazy. Um, but they were in for assault, deadly weapon, theft, all of, you know, every, run, running the gauntlet. And the bottom line is at the end of the day, they said, where was my mom and dad, right? Where was, why do I have to step forward? Why do I have to be in this position? Why, you know, there was always that why. They didn't have any. Um, and so that taught me that as a parent, I need to step up for my kids and, and fight for my kids. And I didn't know how to do that because I was a latchkey kid myself. Meaning that was a term used in the 80s and 90s where there was no parents at home that they were always gone. And so that kids always used the key to get into the house. They were, we were called latchkey kids. So I appreciate that you're getting this class. Um, and I, I appreciate your advocates for your fellow students. That everybody has a story. Um, and that their story makes them unique and an expert in their field. And not to discount that. They may not have a degree, 
but they have a story. And that makes them wise in, in their decision making for themselves and, and influences um, that they can then propel for friends and family and future. So congratulations on taking the class. That just shows your wise or your parents were wise, whoever forced your parent, your mom. So thank them. <laughs> um, you know, and include your parents in this. You know how strong of a relationship between the parents and the and the student would greatly benefit from the skills, not just from your friends. It's your family that counts more. Um, so just congratulations and thank you for sharing your stories. Okay, board member grab it. Um, I'll be quick because I know we've had you guys have been here a long time. But first of all, I just have to say that um, I'm so envious you get to spend so much time with Mrs. Vandenacker. She is, well, you guys know this already, one of the warmest, kindest people I've ever met. And I, my question is, do other teachers have access to this curriculum, or is it? Can you get it outside of East High School for those of us who teach? Yes, however, again, I give credit to Greg Mon. You've got to have a principal that believes in it. Otherwise, they go into staffing and you need one more math class, one more English, one more science. And uh, Taylor, I hope it's okay, but I'm thinking of my little Taylor when her mom died and the tragedy, do you give her two periods of math, English, or science? It, none, yet she was able on her own to um, be welcomed in this class. And again, it's not what I do, it's my students and they, what they know and their knowledge of caring for each other and uh, helping each other through those tough times. But um, with Mr. Mon's permission, absolutely, Jennifer, you know anything that I have, I gladly give to you um, because I, I do believe in it. You know that 25 years of my life's work is is teaching the social emotional learning skills. I will say it's not a quick fix of let's just have an advisory class. Let's do a team grouping every 15 minutes in the morning. That's not the scope of what you're hearing today. What you're hearing today has been taught and really um, gone through um, a process, if you will, like anything else of learning a foreign language. It, it really has. Thank you. Thank you. Well, th well, thank you. I'm not seeing any other board member comments or questions. So thanks again for being here and 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 safe tra travels and hope you find success. Thank you. Thank you.